Hi, my name is Sam Pizzagatti. I'm with the Institute for Policy Studies here in Washington, D.C., and I've just written a book entitled The Rich Don't Always Win. They really don't. In fact, over the first half of the 20th century, the rich lost big time. The winners would be average Americans. I tell that story in The Rich Don't Always Win, the story of the triumph over the wealthy that created the first nation on earth where most people, the majority of people, lived above the poverty line. In the 1950s, thanks to this triumph, the United States had a middle-class majority. Average Americans in the 1950s could afford to live in houses just like these. They could afford to take vacations and send their kids to college. They could look forward to secure retirements. How did we achieve all this? Simple. We shared the wealth. This Washington, D.C. mansion was built about a century ago, at a time we didn't do much sharing. The enormous wealth our economy created back then almost all settled in the pockets of the rich. Those rich grabbed a wildly disproportionate share of our nation's wealth, just like today. For America's elected leaders a century ago, working people essentially remained out of sight, out of mind, also just like today. The U.S. Senate had become, as one newspaper editor put it, a billionaire's club. Not surprisingly, those millionaires set things up so that the rich paid precious little of their incomes and taxes to the U.S. Treasury. Yes, by the 1920s, the rich seemed to have everything under control. They hobnobbed in exclusive private clubs, and they claimed they were bringing America a new era of greatness and glory. In reality, they weren't ushering in greatness. They were ushering in the greatest economic disaster in American history, the Great Depression. Americans had a solution to this disaster. They called for an end to plutocracy, an end to rule by the rich. Americans would struggle as never before to share the wealth. Military veterans organized what was called a bonus army and marched on Washington, D.C. They set up camp right at this very spot. Elsewhere in America, farmers stopped foreclosures, workers shut down assembly lines. From coast to coast, Americans demanded and won higher taxes on the rich. Their victory makes for a rather thrilling tale, and my new book, The Rich Don't Always Win, digs out parts of this history that have almost totally faded away. Did you know, for instance, that one occupant of this house Franklin Roosevelt actually fought for a maximum wage, a limit on rich people's incomes? By the 1950s and 1960s, America's wealthy were paying three times more of their income and in taxes to the IRS than they do today. And America's unions had a headquarters within hailing distance of the White House, no longer out of sight, out of mind. High taxes on the rich, a wide and vital trade union presence, these became the building blocks for a middle-class America. Over the last three decades, we've lost this America. Can we get it back? My book, The Rich Don't Always Win, ends on that question and offers some answers that can help us build a much more equal nation, a much better nation. Find out more about the struggle against inequality and maybe even join it. Read my new book, The Rich Don't Always Win, The Forgotten Triumph of Plutocracy That Created the American Middle Class. And be sure to check out inequality.org and subscribe to Too Much, the online weekly on excess and inequality.